Hi everyone, welcome back. So um, today we're going to have a look at the this keyword and we're also going to look at um, the, some constructors, overloading constructors and I think I've briefly mentioned it throughout the series of these videos anyway and also another one is um, using multiple classes within a file. So let's get to it. <laughs> So here we have an example of two classes within a source file. Um, we haven't come across that word yet. So uh, we're using some terminology that is going to be used throughout, like I said, all the time in my videos. So um, we're introducing more and more. So this is a source file where there's multiple classes within a file. You can only have one public class within a file um, and non-public classes can be used only by other classes in the same package. So as we know from uh, one of the earlier videos, I said a group of uh, classes together are in a package and that's where we have our importing our, our packages from the JV, Java, JV, Java API application programming interface. <laughs> um, and then when you use like the scanner object, you have to um, import a package from the Java API. And that's a group of classes that were already pre-built. So now what we're doing is looking at classes that we're building, but um, in a source file, there are multiple classes and only one ha can have public access. So we have public, private, and protected, the three Ps, which I um, have mentioned previously. Um, and in this class, we call it with a capital T for this class. Um, and then we have our entry point. So the start of our program is um, public static void main. String, as we know now, it's a uh, an array um, called args, um, and then here we have time one, and we call it time is equal to new time one. So it's instantiating a new object, um, and we're passing through three different um, parameters: hour, minute, and second. And for the hour, minute, and second, you can see here that we're going to need wherever this time one is, we're going to need um, an integer um, here and another integer here and another integer here. And then we print it out in the screen and use this um, method here called build string. So if we go down then to time one and have a look at it here, it's class time one and we have three private instance variables called private int h, m and s just to avoid confusion because I could easily call this hour, minute and second as well. But you can see later on where we're going to use the this keyword, it's important to not get confused when I actually use the word hour, minute and second. Now, so we have our class here, then we have our constructor, which is the thing that is called to construct the object. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> so if we, if, we call, if we call a new object, time one, which we do up here, you can see, and we call it time. Then we have to pass in whatever is used in, using these here. So if it's not the default constructor, then it's going to have to pass int hour, int minute, int second. If we did not have any constructor here at all, pretend that wasn't there, and it then it would just then it would just be time one like that and it works. You can see here that there's no um, constructor here. So it's just um, it's just using the default constructor. So there's no parameters being sent through. Now I'm gonna undo that. <laughs> but because we're not using the default constructor, we have to make sure we pass through the parameters that it's expecting. Um, so we have inch, hour, minute and second. Now, we use the this keyword, which we've used before. And this keyword is basically a reference to itself. So it's using this class um, called time one. So I have used the H, M and S so that you can see where it's, where, what it's referring to. However, normally speaking, you would also call this, if I just uh, do here what's called refresh and rename it to hour then you can see there's going to be confusion later on because you're you are referring to it with a meaningful name 
instead of a, a letter, which is not good programming practice, but just for demonstration purposes, it's it's good to, to differentiate between these. So we have int, hour, minute, and second. And when you call that constructor, it is here and it assigns it to the class variable this.hour, which is here. Now I'm gonna put this back to its original that I had it at, so I refactor it and rename it. And that's it refactored, so it, it changes the name of it the whole way throughout. If I was just to rename it without using that, you'd have to do it manually the whole way through. So that's a, another tip. <laughs> so we have here in our constructor, we have if hour is less than zero, and it's the same as the previous example that I did in the previous video, so I will link that below. Um, so I will skip through this, and this is creating a new illegal argument uh, exception. And we have here our uh, two universal string, returning our string.format. As we said in the previous, it's, um, as we said in the previous video, the system.out.print is similar to the string dot format um, in that you can you can pass a string and then call different um, variables and wherever the, those variables are called they're put into the placeholders so in this case we're calling this <laughs> hour minute and second from this um, class and then we're also going to build the string and obviously it's the similar conditions with the ternary operator if the hour is going is equal to zero or if the hour is equal to 12 equal to in terms of english not in terms of java <laughs> um, then output 12 or divide it by 12 minute second and then do the same if it's less than 12 am or pm um, then output am or pm so here, if I just come back here to where I was saying about the constructor, because um, this is kind of the, the main part of it, is that here we have, we're creating a new object. So when we're creating the new object, if I removed any of these perimeters, it would cause an error. You can see here it's underlined already. So it's expecting three arguments. The constructor time one is undefined add arguments to match so if i add the arguments it just sets it to zero 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 so you, it gives you the hint of what it's expecting um if i was to do that again <laughs> um you can see here that it's going to say um it's going to give certain things that it's required so if i just remove this here it says change the constructor and remove the argument. So if, if I press this, it's going to remove it down here. It's going to take away these. So if I was to um, hover over this again, and it says change constructor, or I can create a new constructor with nothing in it, and it passes in nothing. So if I was to do that, then it would also work, but we're not getting, we're not receiving any perimeters. So if I go back first and run this, and you can see that it's 3.30.19 p.m. <laughs> because it's um, it's doing a, its format, it's building, it's building its string here in this. However, if I was to remove this now, for just for demonstration purposes, and hover over the error and create a new constructor. It's going to create it down here, here, which is the auto-generated constructor stub with no perimeters in it because it's calling no perimeters up here. And if I press play, nothing's going to appear. There's just going to be, it's just going to be the default. It's, we can't pass any through anything through the perimeters, um, which we don't want to do. But if I wanted to, for instance, put in other things. So for, for example, if I had int hour, int minute, and then I said here, 
but usually it's better to remove. The to-dos are also listed on your um, integrated development environment. So when you have a to-do to do in a, a large uh, team that you're working on, in the to-do list, you can tick off the to-dos that are done. It's usually really helpful when you're working in a team environment and you could allocate different work to different people um, within, within the team. So I have here um, this dot, oh, should I say this hour, <laughs> um, minute, and then zero. Okay, so if I then go back up here and say hour 12 minute, then it also works. So. Um, you can see here that time one, um, when it creates a new object for time one, it, it doesn't, it looks for the constructor that has the correct, um, signature, method signature. Um, so if I show this now, it's just going to produce 1203. Or if I say, for instance, I don't know, 15. <laughs> And you'll see 303 <laughs> um, and it will come up um, with the correct constructor based on the arguments um, it invokes constructor with three arguments or multiple arguments depending on what you're passing through so if I was to put in um, 55 here now it's not going to call this one because it's expecting only two in the formula, we'll call it formula, like in mathematics, <laughs> x plus y, instead of just x plus y, it's expecting x plus y plus z. So if I press play now, it shows 30355. And you can see here that this is set to zero. So this is, um, for instance, or if I could set it 13, let's say, <laughs> and only put up the two here, then it will come up with um, 15, 3, 13, so 3, oh, 3, 13. So you can set the different default things and then this is referring to um, itself. So it's referring to uh, this um, specific class with everything in it. So I have this hour, minute and uh, second. So it's this hour and minute, which this, is referring to this <laughs> as well so um it's assigning it um, what it wants and um i think the the compiler uh, invokes the appropriate um constructor by matching the 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 number type and order of um arguments specified in the constructor call so if i also only have if I have nothing, it's going to give me an error because I don't have the constructor for that. So let's keep going with the constructors. So create a new constructor, just empty constructor. Um, so every time you create an object, it calls a constructor. If it's the default constructor, then um, you don't have a constructor within your class. Then, um, but these are the the other ways of implementing constructors so you can have multiple constructors and they're called overloaded constructors <laughs> um, and I, I mentioned overloaded methods before um, but this is when you create a new object and then it's an overloaded constructor hello so um, I've written out some code here um, regarding the time again so important thing to note the default constructor um, if you create another constructor um, in your class then the default constructor goes away so um, if you want to invoke the default constructor then you also have to make a default constructor um, so that would mean that here um, the time one time one equals new time one object. If I go down here, then this is the constructor that's going to be called for that argument because there's no arguments with it. Um, and like we said just a few minutes ago that it takes um, the signature of the constructor and it, it 
it it um, has to check the amount of arguments the type of arguments and um, go from there so we that's number one thing we have to make note of and the um, second thing then is uh, we have our hour uh, minute and second within each of these there it's creating a new object each time and then outputting it to the screen so if I go down here then this is one constructor which takes three arguments of three integer types this is another constructor takes two arguments of integer types and then assigns the second to 13. This takes only one argument and assigns the, the rest to the 13 and 13. This takes no arguments and this is lovely because this is invoking the other constructor within this class that takes in three arguments. So if uh, if I can see here, this is time one, time one, time one. <laughs> so if I can open the declaration, even though these are private instance variables, there is a special relationship between objects and classes. So because this is a constructor that's invoking this constructor, it's invoking another constructor, um, that is called a delegating constructor. So it's it's looking for these three per, uh, per private instance variables and invoking all of this as is down here. So if I go here, then it's just using the this, so it's um, referencing itself. So you can see when I hover over this, it actually shows me um, time one dot time one int hour int minute and in second. So now there will be a compilation. Let's just show you <laughs> instead system dot out dot print ln now and if I press play <laughs> it's going to have a member um, access issue because let me just show you the error first um, because the main thing is this um, is going to be causing an error because it's not the first line in this constructor. If you're using the this keyword and invoking the same constructor um, within the same class, then you need to have it as the first line. So if I press play now again, and you can see it's all nice and neat. <laughs> so we have each of our Let's just move across the console a little bit and go through this a, a little bit more. So we have our default, which I've set to 13, 13, 13. That's output here. Let's go down to our default constructor in time one. Which is down here. Default constructor and then it's setting these variables, which is in our private instance variables private hour, minute and second, usually they're the same name. Um, just for demonstration purposes, I have them as H, M and S. Um, usually they should be, uh, it's good programming practice and good for naming conventions that it's correctly named, <laughs> but this is just for uh, showing you the difference. Um, so this 13, 13, 13. The next constructor that's going to be invoked is time two and it takes three arguments. And that one is here. Or it can also be this one. <laughs> uh, sorry, this one because it's referencing to itself. Um, this uh, time three then takes two arguments. Let's go look for that. We're basically doing all the work for the program at the moment, <laughs> going through these um, in hour and minute and then sets the default to 13 and so on and this only takes one so now if i just show you again and then it builds the string calls the method within the time one and that's it so that's it for today i hope you enjoyed um please send feedback to learn computers with ali at gmail.com um, press a like on the video if you liked it i'd love to hear your feedback and happy programming <laughs> thanks for watching